But first I want to dismiss two senses in which evolution is misleadingly supposed to be progressive before coming on to some senses in which I think it can be justifiably called progressive. First, the idea of the great chain of being as it applies to modern, contemporary living animals. And second is the human chauvinistic idea that evolution has always been aiming at some distant target uh, in the future, presumably Homo sapiens. The great chain of being. Zoologists and lay people refer to animals as higher or lower. The literature on comparative psychology is riddled with snobbish, downright silly phrases like subhuman primates, subprimate mammals, submammalian vertebrates, all implying an unquestioned ladder of life, defined so as to leave Homo sapiens perched smugly on the top rung. Uncritical authors regularly move up or down the, quote, evolutionary scale. You have to bear in mind that they're talking about moving among modern animals, which are, after all, contemporary cousins of one another. Students of comparative mentality unabashedly ask how far down the animal kingdom does, say, learning extend. Volume one of Libby Hyman's Treatise on the Invertebrates is called Protozoa Through Tenophora. Through is the American up to and inclusive. Uh, and it suggests that the animal phyla exist along a scale such that everybody knows which phyla sit between the protozoa and the tenophora. Unfortunately, all zoology students do know we've all learned the same groundless myth. I see this as part of a mania for arranging things in hierarchies, the kind of thing which led the Victorians and Edwardians to see human races as arranged in a ladder of superiority, inferiority, rather than seeing them as different and parallel. It's the same kind of thing that leads archaeologists to expect all societies to pass through the same historical stages in the same order, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. Or perhaps societies do pass through progressive stages in a fixed order, but this, this seems to be assumed more than it's justified. <coughs> And I shall certainly be arguing that evolving animals don't pass through a comparable set of stages. Well, if we have two animals, A and B, can it mean anything to say that A is lower or B is higher? There does seem to be a kind of meaning, and it's a, a fantastic muddle up of the following relations. A is ancestral to B, a resembles their common ancestor more than B. A is simpler than B. A is stupider than B. A is less well adapted than B. A is less adaptable or less versatile than B. And A resembles man less than B does. Well, each one of these relations might separately be made meaningful. But they don't all mean the same thing. There's no reason to expect them to be correlated with each other. I shall mention just two of them to demonstrate this. First, A is simpler than B. Most of us, I think, believe that we know what that means. Uh, there have been a few attempts to define it precisely, many of them stemming from J.W.S. Pringle's definition in 1951. He used information theory. He defined simplicity as the opposite of complexity in epistemological terms. That's to say he defined the complexity or the simplicity of our description of something in the real world. If you take a lobster and a millipede, you can conclude that the lobster is a more complicated animal than the millipede. Because if you have a lobster and a millipede, you can write a book about each of them, and if you go down to the same level of detail in each of the two books, the lobster book will be a longer book than the millipede book. Uh, this has a rationale as follows. Uh, both these animals have a segmented body plan. They have a segment at the front, and then it works backwards like a goods train. And uh, in the case of the millipede, 
Essentially, when you've seen one segment, you've seen them all. <laughs> As Governor Reagan of California said of the Pacific Coast redwood trees. In the case of the lobster, the segments are different. There is um, heterogeneity among segments. You need, in effect, a separate chapter on each segment, whereas in the case of the, of the millipede, you, you write one chapter on a typical segment and then multiply it up. So the relation is simpler than, or is more complex than, can at least in principle be made meaningful, although, of course, it doesn't follow that for any two animals, A and B, one will turn out to be more simple or more complex than the other. The second relation I want to consider, A is more like the common ancestor than B, equally can be made meaningful. A lamprey is more primitive, using the word primitive to stand for this relation, a lamprey is more primitive than a human, not because it is ancestral to humans, of course it's not, it's our cousin like every other contemporary animal, nor because it's simpler, although it might be, nor stupider, although it might be. A lamprey is more primitive than a human because if we could be presented with the common ancestor of a lamprey and a human, we would judge it to resemble the lamprey more than it resembles the human. In other words, there has been less evolutionary change along the road from common ancestor to lamprey than along the road from common ancestor to human. I don't wish to advocate the use of higher and lower terminology at all, but if you wanted to, you could at least have a sporting chance of making it meaningful if you decided upon either the is simpler than definition or the is more primitive than definition. But once again, don't expect these two definitions to amount to the same thing. They may be quite uncorrelated. <laughs>